Alexandria, thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Do you have any experience that qualifies you for this job? I was growing up during the, the Clinton era. Um, and then basically when I was in middle school, 9-11 happened. Do you have any knowledge whatsoever about how our political system works? Mm. Yikes. Does that make you a, a little bit nervous? Put socialism into your own words. Unprecedented concentration of wealth at the very top, tippy top of the 1%. Wow, I'm, I'm kind of surprised to hear you admit that. It, it sounds like what's going on in socialist Venezuela. Mm -hmm. What do you think about what's going on in Venezuela? Just an, an increasing crisis of humanitarian condition. And to me, it would just be completely unacceptable if that happened on our shores. Well, couldn't that happen here if, if we adopted socialism? It's hard to say what direction that that takes. I am not the expert on geopolitics. Didn't you major in international relations in college? Middle Eastern politics is not exactly what's at my kitchen table every night. Venezuela is not in the Middle East. I may not use the right words. <laughs> <laughs> How do you respond to the people who say that socialism has never worked? Capitalism was the most efficient and best economy, perhaps. Abject poverty is at the lowest level it's ever been because of capitalism. Well, I, th I think the numbers that you just talked about is part of the problem. I, I don't understand. Oh, um, So what do you hope to accomplish when you're in Congress? This is a really good question. So what is it? I just think that that's the wrong question. Okay. So why should voters vote for you? You vote. It's, it's democratic. Well, this has been enlightening. Thank you so much for coming on. Democratic darling Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez has no problem touting her free-for-all socialist agenda to liberal outlets. But when Ben Shapiro offered her $10,000 to debate, she accused him of catcalling and refused. So what's her excuse now, now that conservative women are challenging her to the debate? Let's ask them. We have Kaya Jones, sits on the National Diversity Coalition for Trump, along with Turning Point USA Communications Director Candace Owens and the conservative millennial CRTV host, Ali Beth Stuckey. All of you have challenged her to a debate. I've been reading all of your tweets. She has not, I don't think, responded. I want to go around uh, the square here and ask. And Candace, I'll start with you because you were offering her $100,000 to a charity of her choice, thanks to um, people who have contributed to Turning Point USA. Did you ever hear from her? I did not hear from her, and this is not the first time that she's declined to debate me. She ignored uh, a TV station which came forward and said that they would actually sponsor a conversation between the two of us. And I think that this indicates that she doesn't understand the platform upon which she stands for. It would make sense for her to want to come forward and defend her ideas, but of course, her ideas do not make sense beyond on the paper the utopian concepts that she preaches. So it's unfortunate, but I'm not surprised whatsoever. Yeah, she, she put herself in this ring. I thought maybe she's young, maybe she's not ready for a debate, but she did run for office and she was elected, so we need to hear her thoughts. Uh, Kaya, I know you asked her to, to debate her. You put on Twitter, can I please debate you? Did you ever hear from her? Not a penny, not a word. And you know, I want her to debate at Politicon. You know, Politicon is gonna be an open platform, very non-biased. So I was hoping that she would have responded, but nothing. Why do you think she didn't? Uh, I, I think she's scared to debate. I think that's the thing, the socialistic platform of the regime that she's thinking to bring into the American uh, platform is just, I don't think she knows what she really is going to debate about. I think she's confused even. You know, some of the things mm -hmm. she has said, she's not even sure about Nancy Pelosi, which is part of her team. Ali Beth, you, you did that mock video over and you were hit, hit for it. Why don't you think she's responding to you? 
Exactly. Well, first of all, let's make something clear. She didn't deny Ben Shapiro's offer to debate based on sexism. She did it based on fear. And the ironic thing is, is that when I released that satirical interview just a couple weeks ago, she responded by accusing Republicans of being scared of her. Uh, well, considering that she has ignored or denied all requests from conservative men and women to have a conversation mm -hmm. about the pros and cons of socialism, I would say that it's not us that is scared of her. It is she that is scared of us. That's interesting because Nancy Pelosi said that Republicans were scared of her too in that interview on NBC. All right, let's look at this poll. This is a Gallup poll that Democrats view socialism more positive, positively than they do capitalism. Unbelievable. Look at those numbers. 57% of the Democrats that were polled, they said they liked socialism. 47% said they liked capitalism. Those numbers have changed. In 2016, more Dems liked the, liked the idea of capitalism than socialism. It's changed by nine points. Why this change? Is it because of, of people like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez? I'll um, start with you, Candace. I actually think it's because of the Democrats and their aggressive rhetoric in response to Trump winning the presidential election. They're going mm -hmm. to have to contend with this. The more moderate Democrats, which I think is what Nancy Pelosi and Maxine Waters actually are, have been using aggressive rhetoric, accusing everybody of sexism and, and of racism. And what has been born of this right. aggressive rhetoric is this extreme left platform which wants to create a utopian society, a utopian Correct. society which believes that money can grow on trees, which of course we know <laughs> it can't. Socialism has killed 100 million people in the last 100 years. Yeah, do they not know what, what it's like to live in a, obviously they don't know what it's like to live in a socialist country, but we've had so many guests on, Kaya, that have told us what it's like that, yeah. that these dictators kill their, their relatives. Do they just not know the, the correct definition? You have Paul Krugman in New York Times, he said, he wrote this on Twitter, a funny thing happens when you demonize universal health care, nutritional yes. aid and unemployment benefits as socialism. Lots of people yeah. decide socialism is okay. Why do they think socialism is okay? I think they think it's okay because they look at Canada and they see it works for their. You know, Canada has GST, PST tax. This is how they can fund all of their money growing on trees ideas, but it's not free. With every dime you spend in Canada, you're actually paying for all of those things. Lest we forget, these ideas of socialism is very anti what the foundation of America is about and very anti the platform that President Trump ran on. Their sole goal is to get rid of our military, get rid of our police, and they're feeding rhetoric to the American people, fueling an internal war, which is very scary. Ali Beth, I'll give you the last word. Yeah, you know, I think that Nancy Pelosi and Democratic leadership are, are unfortunately going to have to get on board with socialism. Uh, this is no longer the party of the working man as it used to be maybe a few decades ago. It's the party of free stuff, and they're going to have to get on that train or they're going to get voted out. Okay, well, if Alexandria is watching, I invite her to come on Fox News, and we, we'll have a debate. She can choose one of you or all three of you. Um, Maybe we could get Bernie Sanders to come on with her, and then y'all could debate, both of them. We'll see. <laughs> that Thanks, would be ladies. fun. That would be a nightmare <laughs> for them, but fun.